guys uh, we want to look at the prostate pathology in the last video we looked at the anatomy of prostate remember we saw the <clears throat> we saw that it is an accessory gland of the male reproductive system so this prostate problems will occur only in men correct and uh, what is the function of prostate it will make some secretions so that the seminal fluid becomes alkaline the normal weight of prostate gland is 20 gram why is this important this is important because uh, prostate can enlarge with age okay it can also get atrophied but mostly it is a hyperplasia that happens so this 20 gram can become so uh, more so much more so you should know the normal weight of prostate it's around 20 gram okay so we have looked at the relations, uh, the location, the relations of prostate. We have also looked at uh, a cut section kind of an image where you can see the prostatic urethra, seminal vesicle opening here, the ejaculatory duct opening into the prostatic urethra. You will also have openings for the prostatic secretions also. The histology of prostate gland important the normal histology just note here one thing this inner part of the prostate that is around the prostatic urethra this is called as a female part because it is sensitive to estrogen and androgen okay so it is both like female part and male part it is it is sensitive to both estrogen and androgen however the outer part <clears throat> it is sensitive only to androgen Let's write that here. It seems to be an important thing that they have mentioned. Outer part is sensitive to androgen. So it is called as true male part. <coughs> Inner part is sensitive to androgen and estrogen okay so it's considered as a female part okay is this clear guys fine so now the revision is over i think we can deep dive into pathology correct in pathology we will cover three topics okay prostatitis that is the that is the inflammation of uh, prostate then you have the nodular hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is, what do you say, increase in the number of cells, correct? Yeah. So, yeah. So, hyperplasia, nodular hyperplasia, this is the most important part for the exam. Yeah. Nodular hyperplasia is what has been asked in the exam, okay? So, then you have the carcinoma. Yeah. Yes. So, prostatitis, nodular hyperplasia and carcinoma. Three things we will study in pathology. Now, what you have to note here is nodular hyperplasia, it is a benign condition, okay, and it occurs in the periurethral part, that is around the prostatic urethra. This is very important, the location. It occurs around the prostatic urethra, right, and hence it compresses the prostatic urethra. You understood, right? You remember seeing the prostatic urethra, all that, see here. So, the nodular hyperplasia occurs around this prostatic urethra. Hence, there will be compression of the prostatic urethra. However, carcinoma occurs in the outer zone. Hence, there is not no significant compression of the urethra. Okay. Is this clear? So, let us now move on to the details of each. Prostatitis, nodular hyperplasia, carcinoma. Like I told you, one second, let me add here. Carcinoma is malignant, right? That much you will know because of the name itself. Carcinoma is malignant. Nodular hyperplasia is a benign condition. For exam, nodular hyperplasia is very important. So, we will be focusing mainly only on nodular hyperplasia. Now, prostatitis. Let us look at prostatitis. You have acute prostatitis, chronic prostatitis and granulomatous prostatitis. Acute usually <clears throat> will be because of some 
infection right bacteria some usually related to uti the pathogens like e coli klebsiella proteus pseudomonas enterobacter gonococci staphylococci streptococci okay so usually that will cause the acute prostatitis then coming to chronic prostatitis in chronic prostatitis um, it can be because of bacteria or it can be because of a bacteria also that is no bacteria this is because of um, chlamydia trachomatis urea plasm urea lyticum because of all these okay so this we are calling it as uh, bacteria a bacteria actually all are caused by bacteria chlamydia trachomatis urea plasm urea lyticum all these are bacteria itself okay but the only thing is here there is recurrent uti here there is no recurrent uti okay now what will you find in uh, prostatitis that is inflammation what will you find grossly grossly you will see that the prostate is enlarged swollen tense right there will be necrosis histologically what will you see histologically you will see that the acini are dilated filled with neutrophilic exudate so this is very very easy to write any inflammatory condition write neutrophils now this granulomatous prostatitis uh, this is a variant of chronic prostatitis itself okay so this leakage of prostatic secretions into the tissue so here you will see <clears throat> it is also a chronic condition prostatic secretion will leak into the tissue okay here it could be an autoimmune reaction and the prostate will be hard so you can confuse it to be a carcinoma how will you know the hard etc see this is a per rectal examination where the index finger is inserted and uh, into the rectum right into the anal canal and you are going to press against the prostate right and you can feel the size and the hardness so if it is hard it could usually be a carcinoma fine or obviously a granulomatous prostatitis so what we have seen so far we wanted to read the pathology of prostate so we wanted to look at prostatitis nodular hyperplasia and carcinoma in this uh, we have covered prostatitis so far prostatitis three types acute chronic granulomatous correct if you if they ask you gross you can just say that it will be swollen etc microscopy just one word neutrophils because everything else you can write okay dilated etc fine we have covered prostatitis in the next video let us continue with the pathology let's look at nodular hyperplasia very important for the exam nodular hyperplasia then we'll look at carcinoma okay see you in the next video